Welcome to a new vlog. I know people have been asking in the comments for more project videos, so here is a new project video. I have revised my ESP32 valve actuator board and uh, I now have bumped this to revision D and what you see here is a special edition, a first edition of this uh, PCB in a uh, beautiful red solder mask with any gold plating. Now, if you're not familiar with this uh, project, it started a couple of years ago when I installed an underfloor heating system and uh, each circuit of that system is controlled by these uh, electrical actuators and there are commercially available systems to automate that but I didn't like any of the existing options because they were rigid, very rigid in terms of uh, options and uh, they could not be integrated with smart home uh, systems like Home Assistant to give you individual control over those uh, valves. And so at that point I decided to just design my own and base it on an ESP32 so that I could uh, have it uh, work or uh, be compatible with any of the open source available uh, systems like Tasmota, ESP Home, Home Assistant and any other um, implementation that supports the ESP32 microcontroller. Then, due to popular request, I also started selling these through my Tindy shop. Well, I'm happy to tell you that there are now a couple hundred uh, of the previous uh, revisions out in the wild running for the past couple of years and I've received no warranty or issues reports so far. But to make this even easier to manufacture in low volume, I decided to spin this new revision to address a few things with regards to improving the manufacturing process. So there is uh, no major new functionality in this uh, revision D. It just helps make it easier to build one of these and, and also enables the user to power the valves with a different AC voltage than the power uh, required to supply the board. So you could feed something like 24 volts AC for the valves separately. And in this video I'm gonna go over the changes that I made and explain the decision making behind every change. So this could be useful to watch if you plan to buy one of these but also if you're interested in electronics design in general. But before I go into the list of changes for this revision, let me quickly mention that I will be able to offer about five uh, assembled units of this first edition version for sale. And if you'd like to grab one, please send an email to contact at volog.com and the first five people to email me will get a chance to purchase this beautiful red PCB with gold plated finish, uh, which I will only make in this limited run, by the way, uh, these PCBs have been made by PCBWay.com, which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Vollog uh, YouTube channel. And you will also find a link to their shop in the description below should you decide to order your own PCBs. And I must say, these turned out great. The quality is top-notch, same as always, and they look really great in this combination. Additionally, I will also start taking pre-orders for the next batch that uh, will be just the uh, classic green option with a hassle lead free finish. I'll probably offer a discount for the pre-orders, but you'll have to prepay in advance and orders will be shipped in January 2024. I'll have to work on that website to collect the pre-orders. It's not ready yet. Uh, for now, it's just a mailing list that you can subscribe to, which I will link in the description of the video. Sign up to that list when the website is ready. I'll send you an email to place your pre-order. And the reason for taking these uh, pre-orders uh, in advance is uh, for me to get a real idea of the batch size that I need to prepare and uh, also to make it a bit more easy to bear all of these costs. So now back to our valve controller board. Uh, doesn't this red solder mask with uh, gold Enig uh, finish look great? Uh, let me know in the comments and similar to uh, previous revisions of this we still have our ESP32 and our 10 triacs offering us the possibility to control up to 10 valves. The first thing that I'm going to talk about and this was a feature requested by a few users which already had underfloor heating systems and uh, valves installed and these were valves they had valves that worked on 24 volts AC. Now with the previous um, revision of the valve controller, uh, which was uh, this one, you only had one su supply line uh, 
which supplied both the AC to DC converter and the valve circuitry and that had to be supplied with 240 volts AC you had no option to supply a different voltage to the valves now starting with this revision D uh, this will be an option when you purchase it it will cost extra because it involves a bit of extra labor to reconfigure the board but you will have an option to have a separate uh, power input uh, for the valves in which case uh, these uh, two jumper resistors JP1 and JP2 uh, will be removed and then you'll have the option to supply your valves through this connector with a different AC voltage like 24 volts for example. I had to select some very special resistors for these jumpers in a 2010 package and these are rated for up to 400 volts operation because they will be uh, subjected to mains voltage and the peaks uh, on uh, riding on that waveform and unfortunately these don't come cheap I also had to make sure I have enough clearance between these uh, uh, signals so you'll see a bunch of uh, new uh, milled slots into the PCB to increase the uh, creepage distance between these signals next I wanted to get rid of as much through hole assembly as possible and switch those parts to SMT and as you'll see next that's not always possible mainly due to cost but also availability of parts in certain packages for example I have these uh, snubber filters on the output of each of the tracks and these are composed by a uh, resistor and an X2 class uh, capacitor which were through hole uh, in previous revisions now if you try to switch the resistors to uh, to SMD again you'll have to use resistors rated for mains voltage and they don't come cheap but I was able to find uh, something reasonable, reasonable from uh, ROM semiconductors now if you try to switch the uh, X2 capacitors to SMD there are very few options and they are very expensive about 20 times the cost of the through hole capacitor and they are not easy to source so I had to keep these in a through hole package um, because it would have increased the cost of the product too much next we had two through hole fuses uh, on this board one to protect the AC to DC converter module that powers the ESP32 and another one to protect the line feeding the valve outputs and I wanted to switch both of these to SMD but uh, you know using SMD uh, sockets plus SMD fuses was again many times more expensive and availability was not good for those parts so I opted for something in between I figured the uh, fuse of the AC to DC module should never break because it has the correct size for the, that circuit and there shouldn't be any overload on that circuit if any it should be limited by the AC to DC converter short circuit protection it's only there for a catastrophic failure which should be extremely rare so I opted to solder an SMD fuse directly to the PCB for that circuit and I opted to keep the through hole fuse uh, with the socket for the uh, valve circuit as that one um, can fail uh, subject to user error and might need to be uh, replaced in, in such cases next we, we have some uh, filtering on the input of the AC to DC module we have a uh, varistor, a capacitor, a bleed resistor and a common mode choke filter again uh, I wanted to switch these to uh, SMV uh, an SMD varistor is very difficult uh, to find uh, they're expensive and pretty much unavailable in small quantities like I needed so I kept the varistor in a through hole um, package the same goes for the uh, X2 class uh, filtering capacitor I was able to switch to an SMD uh, bleed resistor and an SMD common mode filter uh, which again was many times more expensive than the through hole variant but it was still manageable we also had this um, uh, through hole user switch uh, present on the PCB personally I don't use it but I figured some users might make use of it uh, for various purposes so I decided to keep it but I switched to an SMD variant so that would be easier to have it populated at the uh, SMT factory and if you haven't already noticed um, 
I do have a bit of a bodge and I'll have to zoom in on this maybe I'll include the microscope shot during editing because it's really hard to see but I created this footprint in a hurry and I had the pin assignments or the pin numbers for the footprint of the switch wrong so I fixed it by soldering this very tiny uh, connection so all first edition PCBs will have this tiny bodge which of course does not affect their functionality now the factory that where I'm going to assemble these can also populate through hole parts just fine it's more expensive and subject to human errors though. For example, I wouldn't want to have all of these through hole resistors and capacitors just flapping in the breeze across the board installed and, you know, facing all different directions, some with longer leads, some with shorter leads, some flipped around. It would just look very bad. And unless you're doing some very large batches where they would make these assembly jigs, nobody is going to take care to place your through hole parts perfectly like I would have placed them manually. That's also a good motivation to switch as many of these to SMD as possible. I also made another small change in this design where I switched uh, these uh, through hole connections for the I2C uh, and one wire connections as well as these test pads to uh, an SMD JST SH connector and I will be providing a short pigtail uh, for the user to interface this if he wants to connect some uh, external sensors. I also introduced the option to turn on or off this set of LEDs. Uh, they might be useful for debug purposes but once you've installed this in your basement or inside some distribution box nobody is looking at these LEDs anymore. They're just burning power for no good reason. So now there is GPIO 16 uh, it's connected to this transistor and you can configure that as a relay in test mode and it offers you on-off control over this entire LED string for the 10 LEDs showing the um, output status of the tracks. And uh, I also added this uh, light pipe footprint uh, to test light pipe uh, but this will not be uh, used in the final production version. I will not be including any light pipes just because the PCB sits too far away from the top side of the enclosure uh, so the light pipe will not reach top of the enclosure. Um, by the way we're, we're still using the uh, same enclosure uh, model as before with the DIN rail mount and uh, the same external antenna options if users uh, needed to boost their Wi-Fi reception. I also optimized a few other small things around the board like footprints to make them easier to solder. I switched to um, uh, using more resistor networks instead of individual resistors. I switched to using 0402 passives instead of 0603. Just a bunch of little things to make it easier to manufacture. I did a thermal camera test um, on my DIT Spectrum Owl uh, thermal camera for this new revision and things look good and cool I might say. Everything is within uh, normal values for this uh, new revision. I'm happy with how this turned out. By making all of these changes, I did improve my manufacturability, but I have also exposed myself to component shortages by using parts that are not as common. So I'll have to see how this works out over the long run. Now, a couple of things to uh, remember towards the end of the video. Again, there will be around five units of this uh, first edition revision available for sale this week. They will probably go very fast. Just send an email to contact at volloc.com as soon as you see this message. If you want one, uh, there will be a first come first served. And if you want to sign up for the waiting list or pre-order of the next batch that I'm manufacturing, uh, which will likely ship in January, then go to volloc.com slash y slash sign up. This link will also be in the description below. And I would very much like to hear your thoughts um, in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the uh, changes that I've done in this revision and if you would have done it otherwise. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content ahead. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video.